have long been recognized by the academic thinker and non factual Many of their so-called cures, and this is the case also with orthodox medicine, are cures because the hour of the end has not yet arrived for the patient and he would have recovered in any case, though he often does so more rapidly, owing to the remedial measures of the trained physician. In cases of serious accident, where the injured person will bleed, the cultist, no matter what his cult may be called, will perforce avail himself of the methods of the orthodox physician. He will apply a tourniquet, for instance, and take the measures which orthodox medicine enjoins, rather than stand by and see the injured person die because these methods are not used. When he is face to face with death, he will frequently turn to the tried and proved methods of health and will usually call in a physician rather than be charged with murder. All the above is said in no spirit of disparagement, but in an effort to prove that the many schools of thought, orthodox, academic, ancient, material or spiritual, new, pioneering or mental, are interdependent, they need to be brought together into one great healing science. This will be a copyright copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 153. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Science which will heal the whole man and bring into play all the resources, physical, emotional, mental and spiritual, of which humanity is capable. Orthodox medicine is more open to cooperation with the newer cults than are the neophytes of the science of mental control of disease. They cannot, however, permit their patients to be turned into guinea pigs, is not that the term used in these cases, brother of mine. For the satisfaction of the pioneering cultist and the proving of his theories, no matter how correct when applied in conjunction with what has already been proved. The middle way of compromise and of mutual cooperation is ever the wisest, and this is a lesson much needed today in every department of human thinking. We shall now proceed to deal with our third and final section of thoughts around the basic causes of disease. The theme of karma has been little considered and I shall deal with it in a way larger than our particular subject perhaps warrants. Chapter 3, Our Karmic Liabilities Introductory Remarks We have reached now the concluding phase of our approach to the problem of disease. In our next part we shall deal with the attitudes and temperaments of the patient, 
taking into consideration his ray and also the state of mind of the healer. All these points are of prime importance when one comes to the consideration of the fine art of healing. It is, however, essential that ill health, acute disease, and death itself should find their place in the overall picture. A particular incarnation is not an isolated event in the life of the soul, but is a part and an aspect of a sequence of experiences which are intended to lead to one clear, definite goal, the goal of free choice and a deliberate return out of matter to spirit and eventual liberation. There has been much talk among esotericists, particularly in the Eastern presentation of the path to reality and then liberation. The goal held before the neophyte is liberation, freedom, emancipation, this, by and large, is the keynote of life itself. The concept is a transiting out of the realm of the purely selfish and of personal liberation into something much wider and more important. This concept of liberation lies behind the modern use of the word, liberty, but is far wiser, better and deeper in its connotation. Liberty, in the minds of many, is freedom from the imposition of any man's rule, freedom to do as one wishes, to think as one determines and to live as one chooses. This is as it should be, provided that one's wishes, choices, thoughts and desires are free from selfishness and are dedicated to the good of the whole. This is, as yet, very seldom. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 154 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing So Liberation is much more than all this It is freedom from the past Freedom to move forward along certain predetermined lines, predetermined by the soul, freedom to express all the divinity of which one is capable as an individual, or which a nation can present to the world. There have been in the history of the past 2000 years, four great symbolic happenings which have sequentially presented to those who have eyes to see, ears to hear and minds to interpret the theme of liberation, and not simply of liberty. 1. The life of Christ himself. He, for the first time, presented the idea of the sacrifice of the unit, consciously and deliberately offered for the service of the whole. There had been other world saviors, but the issues involved had not so clearly been expressed, because the mind of man had not been ready to grasp the implications. Service is the keynote of liberation. Christ was the ideal server. 2. The signing of the Magna Charta. This document was signed at Runnymede. During the reign of King John on June 15, 1215, A.D. Here the idea of liberation from authority was presented with the emphasis upon the personal liberty and rights of the individual. The growth and development of this basic idea, mental concept and formulated perception falls into four phases or chapters. A. The signing of the Magna Charta, emphasizing personal liberty. B. The founding of the French Republic with its emphasis upon human liberty. Circa. The Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, determining national policy. D. The Atlantic Charter and the Four Freedoms, bringing the whole question into the international field, and guaranteeing to men and women everywhere in the world liberty and freedom to develop the divine reality within themselves. The ideal has gradually become clarified so that today the mass of men everywhere know what are the basic essentials of happiness. 3. 
the emancipation of the slaves. The spiritual idea of human liberty, which had become a recognized ideal, became a demanding desire, and a great symbolic happening took place, the slaves were freed. Like all things which human beings enact, perfection is non-existent. The Negro is not free in this land of the free, and America will have the clean house in this respect. To put it in clear concise words, the USA must see to it that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are facts and not a dream. Only thus can the inevitable working of the law of karma, which is our theme today, be offset. The Negroes are Americans, as well as the New Englanders and all other stocks which are not indigenous in this country, and the Constitution is theirs also. As yet, copyright copyright 1998 rules trust. 155. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. The privileges of confers are withheld by those who are the slaves of selfishness and fear. 4. The Liberation of Humanity by the United Nations. We are participating in a great spectacular and symbolic happening and are watching it in process. The liberation of the individual has moved onward through the symbolic liberation of a section of humanity, the remnants of the first two races, the Lemurian and the Atlantean, to the liberation of millions of human beings, enslaved by the forces of evil, by millions of their fellow men. The ideal has worked through into a practical worldwide effort upon the physical plane and has demanded worldwide sacrifice. It has involved the entire three worlds of human evolution, and for this reason the Christ can now lead his forces and aid human beings to liberate mankind. What has really been happening, therefore, in the lives of individuals, in the lives of nations and in the life of humanity? A tremendous move to put right most ancient evil, to offset consciously the law of cause and effect by a recognition of the causes in the personal, national and international worlds which have produced the effects under which humanity today suffers. The law of karma is today a great and incontrovertible fact in the consciousness of humanity everywhere. They may not call it by that name, but they are well aware that in all today's events the nations are reaping what they sow. This great law, at one time a theory, is not a proven fact and a recognized factor in human thinking. The question, why? So frequently asked brings in the factor of cause and effect with constant inevitability. The concepts of heredity and of environment are efforts to explain existing human conditions, qualities, racial characteristics, national temperaments and ideals prove the fact of some initiating world of causes. Historical conditions, the relationships between nations, social taboos, religious convictions and tendencies can all be traced to originating causes, some of them most ancient. Everything that is happening in the world today and which is so potently affecting humanity, things of beauty and of horror, modes of living and civilization and culture, prejudices and likings, scientific attainment and artistic expression and the many ways in which humanity throughout the planet colors existence, are aspects of effects, initiated somewhere, on some level at some time, by human beings, both individually and en masse. Karma is therefore that which man, the heavenly man in whom we live, humanity as a whole, mankind in groups as nations, and individual man, has instituted, 
carry forward, endorsed, omitted to do or has done right for the ages until the present moment. Today, the harvest is ripe and mankind is reaping